We live in a fantasy world now. Reality has been destroyed. This is the time that you really need to pay attention. The probabilities are overwhelmingly on gold's side. That is the best environment to see gold increase its value. Welcome to Palisades Gold Radio. I'm your host, Tom Bodrovix. Joining me today is Gary Savage, retired entrepreneur, stock and commodity trader, and founder of SmartMoneyTrackerPremium.com. How are you today, Gary? I'm doing good, Tom. Thanks for the invite. Of course. Always great to have you and appreciate you sharing the information that you know you work so hard to put together here. So I'd like to start off by asking you why the number one lesson associated with the metal seems to be patience. Uh, well, right now in particular, we're in an intermediate decline. So those typically have a couple of false rallies. And and this kind of all ties in with sentiment, which we kind of discussed before we started here. Um, in order to build the fuel for the next rally, you need to you need to wash out the bullish sentiment and uh, and create some bearish sentiment. Mm-hmm. And and that usually means in the metals in particular, it usually means you need to have a couple of at least a couple, you know, two, three, sometimes even four false rallies that kind of get people hopeful. And uh, and you'll see the early dip buyers, you know, they've still got the memory of the of the intermediate rally that uh, that, you know, just ended. And so they're worried about missing the next rally. So they, they want to buy quickly. And so that that first rally You'll see a lot of people, you know, saying, oh, you got, you got to buy, you're going to get left at the station. And, and the first rally is almost always uh, a false rally. Um, I, I kind of think that's where we're, we're at right now. We're probably setting up for a, for a false rally. Um, but I think we probably got, um, I would say we've got at least minimum four more weeks and maybe as many as nine more weeks before um, gold is finally done. Now we may not have to do a whole lot of damage. It, it may just be a very erratic whipsawing market, and and you can build sentiment that way as well. You don't have to get a, a huge decline to to build the very sentiment. You can just go sideways and and frustrate people with a bunch of whipsaws, and that creates enough um, frustration to where you can build the uh, the sentiment to power another rally. So right now we. Sentiment on uh, gold and silver, intermediate sentiment is just is pretty much dead neutral. We need to get some bearish sentiment. And I think it's going to take at least at least four more weeks to do that. And like I said, maybe as, as long as eight or nine more weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting to try to consider what would change sentiment like that. And, you know, when we see a lot of these false starts, it seems, in gold, I can absolutely see how that ends up just frustrating people, as you said. But what does this current price action for gold have to do with the dollar? And what are the cycles, let's say, that you're watching for the dollar right now? Uh, so a, a major cycle for the dollar and, uh, and a more intermediate cycle. So the, the intermediate cycle, it looks to me like the dollar put in an intermediate cycle low um, a little over three weeks ago. So we're, we're just starting week four. Um, so we're in the advancing phase of a of an intermediate cycle in the dollar, and even if that cycle was going to left translate, roll over, and make a lower low, still probably going to rally at least seven to ten weeks minimum. So if we're only on week four, we probably got at least three to five, six more weeks to go. And as long as the dollar's rallying, gold's probably going to be uh, declining. Uh, so that's that's one consideration. The other consideration is it, it looks to me like the previous intermediate cycle low, uh, while it's a little bit early, I think that was probably a three-year cycle low. And the reason I say that is this intermediate uh, cycle decline that bottomed um, almost four weeks ago held above uh, the low, uh, the intermediate cycle low that came before. So that makes me think that was more of a major three-year cycle low. Now this three-year cycle could left translate and I actually think it probably will, Um, but it may mean that we've got just a a lot more, we may have to get a lot closer to that um, top at whatever it was, 100 and, what was it, 114, 115. We may have to get a lot closer to that top, maybe some kind of a double top 
before this uh, this three year cycle um, rolls over and starts down. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at at the dollar. It looks to me like we put in a, a three year cycle low a few months ago, and now we're in the advancing phase of a new intermediate cycle. Mm-hmm. Gary, you know, it seems that we've seen gold decouple from its you know, real high correlation to the dollar at times when both were advancing together. So does this relationship kind of switch between, you know, being highly correlated to the dollar at different times? Uh, it does. And, and I, act, I actually think there's going to be a point here where gold just starts to ignore the dollar. And I don't really think the dollar um, controls the, the direction of gold so much as it, it just makes it easier for the the banking uh, sec, you know the banks the, the bullion banks and such to to suppress gold if, if the dollar's rallying it's just easier to suppress gold but I don't think that the dollar actually controls the price of, of gold and at some point gold will just start to ignore the dollar and but I think it's going to have to get a breakout above that 2100 resistance area uh, or zone before that can happen before Gold can just start to ignore the dollar. So, you know, going back to what you mentioned about this, let's say four to nine week period here of frustration for gold, is that kind of what you're seeing as the last buying opportunity of gold for this year, let's say? Uh, I think it's going to be the best, depending on how much, uh, how depressed we can get sentiment. Um, Markets kind of, they're kind of like a pendulum. You know, the, the further it swings in one direction, the, the farther it goes in the other direction. So we need we need some fuel to, to finally break that suppression at 2100. So we really need this correction to either go sideways long enough to really create maximum frustration, or we need to go down and test that 1820 level and create maximum fear. And that'll create the sentiment to give us uh, that that breakout above uh, 2100. So, um, we're just, we're just going to need a little more time. Gold is only on week 16. The average intermediate cycle lasts usually 20 to 25 weeks. So that's why I say, I think we've still got at least four to nine more weeks to go, but, um, we're going to get, um, as long as we can create that negative sentiment, not only are we going to get the buying opportunity of the year, think it might be the buying opportunity of the last five to 10 years, because I think this next intermediate cycle is going to give us that breakout above 2100 and not just a a brief little move in the middle of the night that, you know, miraculously gets sold off before the market even opens. And, you know, we're back down below 20, 29 before the market even opens. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a a breakout that's sustained. And then we go on up to 23 or 2500 before the next correction. Mm-hmm. So, Gary, does the chart for silver tell us a different story, or is it much of the same? Um, silver's confirming that, that um, gold is in an intermediate decline, and while we're, you know, like I said, we're expecting a bounce here at some point. Um, maybe silver's starting to suggest today, and it's rallying a little bit. Maybe it's starting to just suggest we're going to get that uh, that temporary bounce. But uh, I expect t- silver's going to get hit worse, and the miners may get hit the worst. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of miners, but if, if we get, uh, if we go to 1820 and the miners go all the way back and test those lows from um, maybe not, maybe not 2020, but maybe, um, oh, whatever it was, 2022, 20, maybe that was where they made, I'd have to look at the chart, but uh, if we could go back and test those lows, then I'm going to be very bullish on miners. Mm-hmm. It, it, it'll definitely be time to, by miners, there'll be enough blood in the streets uh, for me to be ready to go in heavy on mining stocks. Uh, right now, I'm just not a real big fan of miners. It's kind of a crappy business, but if it gets undervalued enough, then you got to like it. Mm-hmm. So, what would make you see that it's undervalued enough? Just that it has gone down, let's say X percent, and therefore that sentiment is really, really bad. Let me give me a second here. Let me look at this chart of the miners and I'll tell you what I want to see. All right. So uh, this is what I would, this is what I would like to see. uh, And if, if this happens, then I'm going to be very bullish on mining stocks. They'll be undervalued enough that, that I'm going to want to buy Uh, right now. I think 
this level here is is going to be tested. You know, if we get four to six more weeks to go, even if we get a bounce here, uh, I think we're going to test this level at least. I don't think gold's going to get here, but if the miners were to get here mm-hmm. over the next four to eight, uh, nine weeks, then I'm going to be um, beating the drum to, to buy mining stocks. And for uh, just to interrupt for one sec, Gary, for those that are just listening to this on audio, we're looking at the chart of the GDX and seeing the low in September 22. 20. Um, you at about uh, 2150 on GDX. So if, if they can get to there, then I'm going to be really bullish on, on mining stocks. Yeah. And then the other intermediate low you were kind of talking about was that about 25, 25 and a half dollar level. Uh, yeah. 2550. That was the previous intermediate cycle low. And the miners have already traced, in my opinion, they've just traced way too much of, of this intermediate rally here. Mm-hmm. So. You know, we can we can probably almost bet the farm that they're going to uh, test these lows here before this is over, um, and and that would get me, you know, fairly bullish on miners if they do that. But to get really bullish, I, I need to I need to see a retest of these twenty two lows. Mm-hmm. So Gary, we've talked about you know sentiment here. At what point do the fundamentals end up taking over? Are those really, let's say? time shifts in the cycle? Well, I think the fundamentals are already in place. Um, we're just we're just trying to build a fuel for, for gold to, to break through that suppression. It's trying to prevent that breakout above 2100. Mm-hmm. So we need to, like I said, we either need to go sideways long enough to frustrate people. You know, if we go sideways, um, let me put the gold chart up here. So this could... Um, unfold in one of two ways. It may not have to do a whole lot of damage. Gold may only have to get down here to 1950. But if it takes nine weeks to get there and there's just lots of back and forth, I think that that creates enough uh, frustration uh, that uh, that we could have the fuel to finally uh, break out and not get one of these, you know, middle of the night attacks that stops it. Uh, uh, so that's one scenario. Or you know, if we just get a crash, which might happen if we want to talk about stocks here, they're due for that four-year cycle low. If we get a four-year cycle low, the um, selling pressure infects everything, and we could get gold down here and, and retest this. If if that were eighteen twenty dollar level, eighteen twenty dollar level, uh, this cycle technically is left translated. This topped on week nine, so that opens the door uh, for this to to be retested, but. Um, my preferred scenario, or the one I think is most likely, is probably the whipsawing erratic move that only goes down to 1950, but maybe takes seven, nine weeks to get there still, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to this this crash. I think in order to get a crash down to here, you, you got to have that four-year cycle low in the stock market hit, uh, which is, you know, it's possible. I mean, if we top here pretty soon and, and the S&P um, confirms a false breakout, then we might get that four-year cycle low here over the next uh, month or two. And and if that happens, then this this is definitely possible, a, a retest of 1820. Well, that is actually where I wanted to go next, Gary, was your outlook for the stock market. What factors will show us if this is a false breakout move or a move towards this final parabolic bubble top? Um. I don't think we're we're in a in a bubble top. Uh, the reason being, uh, it's too late in this four year cycle. The the four year cycle low is going to be is is actually it's coming due now. Um, the bottom the last four year cycle low is of course that that March 2020 bottom the COVID crash, and so we're we're moving into that four year timing band right now. If we were going to have a bubble, we would need this breakout to have occurred like at least two or three years ago. Uh, and then that would give it time for the bubble to form because it, it usually takes about a year for a new, year and a half for a, a bubble to get mature and pop. Mm-hmm. So we don't really have enough time right now, in my opinion, with, with the four-year cycle low, low coming due right now. So right now, it's it's dangerous. This this may end up being a false breakout. And, and a lot of times you'll get major 
uh, turns uh, or a major trend change can occur uh, in in this uh, type in this fashion. Uh, you'll get this this breakout, big money that um, is anticipating you know something is is wrong. They'll sell into this breakout, get out of the way, and then you get that uh, that trend change and the move down into the into the four year cycle low. And I think four year cycle low is probably going to break these uh, lows from last year, October of last year. Well, 22, I guess it would be Mm -hmm. just below that $3,500 level. Yeah. I I think the four year cycle low probably break that low. So I would be really, I would be watching the S and P right here. If if it comes back down and breaks back below uh, this breakout level, uh, you want to have some kind of plan to get out of the stock market. You don't want to get caught in that four year cycle low. So, so right now, you know, I, you can be long if you want, as long as this breakout holds. But if the breakout fails, I think you got to get back on the sidelines and get out of the way because at some point here this year, we're we're due for that four-year cycle low. Mm-hmm. So, Gary, what do you think this, you know, in turn means for the Fed? I would think that if they saw the stock market coming down like that, that would end up being, you know, kind of mission accomplished. So do you think that that ends up being more of a catalyst for them to cut rates again? Oh, absolutely. If, if we have a four-year, well, when we do have a four-year cycle low, and if it breaks that October of, of uh, 22 low, uh, the Fed absolutely will, they will slash rates again. They'll start more QE. And I think that's the fuel for gold to, uh, to give us, uh, you know, the, the final bubble phase. Um, and it's probably going to, um, ignite the last part of this secular bull market in in stocks, and eventually, I think we'll get a bubble phase in, in the stock market as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think a lot hinges on on the four year cycle low in the, in the stock market here. Probably going to have something to do with um, or with a trigger event. Any way to start it, in my opinion, is probably going to be something to do with the the war in the Middle East and the war in Ukraine. They're they're probably going to expand. Um, we'll get some event, you know, maybe another country gets drawn into one of these or, uh, you know, some politician somewhere is going to do something stupid. And you, know, you know, the rule for politicians, they never admit a mistake. They always double down. So they're, they're not going to put, nobody's going to come to their senses and, and, you know, try and end these wars. It's going to continue and, and almost certainly get worse. So mm-hmm. I suspect that's going to be the trigger, uh, somebody do something stupid and that's going to be the trigger to um, start this four-year cycle low in the stock market. Well, you know, Gary, as we're talking about bubbles, you recently wrote that Bitcoin is a busted bubble. And a major sign of that is the lack of interest in the miners. So can you explain to me your thinking around that topic, please? So, yeah, it, I mean, it, it looks like a bubble to me. Um, like I said, um, I, well, I can show you here. Let me pull up one of the charts of... Um, the Bitcoin miners. Uh, so this is one of the Bitcoin miners. This this looks like a busted bubble to me. And I think that rally we just had in, in Bitcoin, which I can get that chart as well. Um, this looks like a bear market rally. It came right up to this. You know, this was the first major counter trend bounce after this you know, bubble top. And this is characteristic of a bubble. You'll get and, you know, get the warning shot across the bow and then you'll get a, a reactionary move. Um, sometimes, you know, it doesn't get back up to the high. Sometimes you get a double top. This is kind of the double top. And then the real bear market begins. And uh, and then you'll, you'll get bear market rallies along the way. So I know people are, you know, uh, convinced that the, this having or whatever it's called is, is going to trigger the next move up but you know i don't think the miners would those charts would look like that if that was true so i suspect this is just going to be caught in a multi-year sideways churn um, very similar to the nasdaq that topped in 2000 didn't break out again until 2016 so you know we'll we'll get these very convincing and very profitable rallies if you can manage to get in at the bottom and get out at the top but um you know everything to, looks like to me this looks like a busted bubble and this looks like a bear market rally that 
uh, got everybody, you know, I just saw lots of people, you know, I, I tried to warn people here that we were moving into resistance. The Bitcoin miners were diverging. Pretty sure this is bear market, secular bear market. And, you know, no, nobody wanted to listen to that. They, they all have visions of a hundred thousand or a million dollar Bitcoin. And so, you know, they, they got caught and most of those Bitcoin uh, mining stocks are now down I mean, basically in three weeks, they're down 40, 50, 60 percent. So and, and I don't I don't think this is done by any means. I think this is an intermediate degree correction. And it, like gold, it probably has. You know, a couple of couple, maybe a month, maybe two, maybe three months to go yet before this is over. And and ultimately, I, I think you know, the chart of Bitcoin will look just like that chart of the Bitcoin miner. It'll just turn around for years and years. And then, you know, if there, if there is something there, some useful technology, then at some point it'll, it'll come back and it'll come back and make new highs, but it may be many years before it does that. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, in the last couple of weeks, we saw the ETF approval for Bitcoin. Do you think that ends up providing more control of the market for Wall Street? Well, um, I, I think this rally was in in anticipation of that. So we got to sell the news event. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that was another thing I was trying to tell people, you know, this, this market's been rallying for over a year and, and you, you know, you can't take profits, you know, after a year. I mean, how, what do you need to control greed at that point? Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of people couldn't, and so they get caught. And, and this is, you know, one of the things I, I tend to use uh, as one of my tools is I look at markets, you know, that are stretched a long way above the moving averages, which, you know, these things were stretched over 100% above their 200-day moving average. That's the sign of a bubble. Um, when, when markets get stretched too far above their moving averages, they become dangerous. Uh, when rallies last, you know, like this one for uh, over a year, that that's very mature. Um, you know, the, the kind of the unsophisticated investors they assume that since it's rallied a year, that means it's going to rally for another year, and that's just generally not how things work. Usually, you have to have a period of um, give back or consolidation, and we've kind of got the same thing. I think we talked about this. But, before we started that uranium miners, I'm seeing that that same sentiment uh, as I saw here in uh, Bitcoin that, um, you know, the fundamentals are going to prevent um, uranium from correcting. Well, the fundamentals can be, you know, insanely bullish, but you can still have profit taking events. Mm -hmm. Even in, you know, even in secular bull markets, you still have profit taking events that that clear sentiment and then set the stage for the next next move up. So in, unless you're getting ready to move into a, some kind of a, a parabolic bubble, um, then you're going to have to have profit taking events from time to time, no matter how bullish the fundamentals are. And bullish fundamentals don't prevent profit taking events. I think it's way, way too early for uranium to transition into a bubble. So it's probably time for uranium, if, if not now, pretty soon, to have a significant intermediate degree profit-taking event. Um, you know, it, it also has had a, a big rally. The uranium uh, mining ETF, URA, I think it is, rallied more than 75%. If you can't control greed after a 75% rally, you've got problems. Well, so, Gary, let's look at that chart, if you wouldn't mind, and walk us through, you know, let's say the time frames that you're looking at and that are instructing your view here at that point okay so this is this is the um uh, the mining the uranium mining etf you can see we've just had um about what almost a 11 month rally all, you know almost straight up very few corrections i don't think any of these corrections other than this one um, dropped much below the 10 week moving average. And I don't think any of them turned the 10 week moving average down. Mm -hmm. So this has been an, ex an extremely powerful rally. And it's convinced everyone that, uh, that uranium can only go up, that we can never have a correction. But we've got what, at this point right here anyway, looks like 
a, a false breakout. Um, so I, I think you need to be wary here. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you need to control greed, take some profits in this market, and be um, a little patient. And then the um, the other one. Let's see if I can get this chart up. Uh, this is, I, I think this is actual uranium. And uh, I can put the, uh, I can put the 200 day moving average on here. You can see it's, it's starting to get um, quite stretched above uh, the 200 day moving average. This, this is a dangerous market. So, you know, again, you know, just like I was hearing from the, the Bitcoin crowd, you know, the fundamentals uh, are going to, prevent any kind of correction. Same thing, I'm hearing the same thing here. There's, there's a shortage of uranium. There's, you know, the fundamentals are gonna prevent this market from correcting. The fundamentals don't have anything to do with sentiment. The, the fundamentals will remain bullish for uranium, but you know, as long as it's not transitioning into a bubble, it's still gonna have to have profit taking events to clear out sentiment. And I would say, stretch this far above this 200 day moving average, uranium is at extreme risk of a, of a significant profit taking event right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're, if you're still long this market, you need to have, you need to have a stop here somewhere that's gonna allow you to control greed and take profits and not get caught uh, when this profit taking event starts because there's gonna be one. I, I, just, I think it's just way too early for this to, uh, to tra transition into a bubble phase where there really are no uh, profit-taking events. So in order for this bull market to continue, it's got to have some profit-taking events, and I think it's at risk right now. Gary, you mentioned something there that it's not in a bubble phase. What would kind of confirm that it's in that bubble phase, that blow-off top part? Well, it's got to get much, much later in the bull market. I mean, th this bull market only just started in 2020. That's that's not nearly enough time uh, for uh, you know the every Tom, Dick, and Jane to to figure out that hey, people are getting rich, mm. and uh, we need to get in, in into uraniums. When the taxi drivers start talking about uranium miners, exactly. Uh, it, it's just way 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 too early for that. Uh, we've you know it's going to be. A minimum, probably another five years before we can be into that uh, period where that could happen. So, so this this has got to have a profit taking event here to cool off sentiment, um, reset everything, and then you can get the next leg up. Right now, this this leg is just way too mature. We had a character change on this market where it started to go straight up. That's a warning sign too, uh, especially you know after months and months and months and months of rally. Now it starts to go straight up. That's usually an emotional, a sign of emotional trading. You know, retail unsophisticated investors are have, have kind of kind of caught a clue that hey, something's happening here in this sector, and we got to get in. Uh, and it's it's a dangerous sign. It's a sign that you want to tighten your stops up because you don't want to get caught in a big um, profit taking event that could take this all the way back down to this. Um, 200 day moving average. And the rule is the further the rubber band stretches to one side, the, uh, you know, it usually goes a proportional distance in the other direction. So if something that stretched this far above the 200 day moving average, when that profit taking event um, gets started, probably gonna take it back below the 200 day moving average to some degree before it's done. So mm -hmm. um, tighten your stops up on the Uranium market. Gary, I'd like to go back to a point that we kind of touched on peripherally from the Bitcoin market. You know, you were saying that the miners are really showing that this is a dead bubble, but you recently wrote that one of the next emerging bubbles that you could see is in the metals markets. So with that being considered, should we be seeing some of the miners sniff out and anticipate this next move up in gold ahead of the actual metal price moving? Well, they they very well could bottom early, but it's not going to be months early. I don't mm -hmm. think it'll be a day or two early. You'll you'll get um, a lower low in gold, and the miners won't confirm. And, and that's smart money is is anticipating the low. You know they're they're seeing the signs, and and I've gone over this in, in my premium 
reports um, multiple times. We know what the signs are to look for uh, at an intermediate bottom in gold. Um, we're just, we're not there yet. But um, if we start to see those signs and, and if the miners start to diverge a little bit, uh, you, a day or two before gold bottoms, um, you can get that kind of a divergence, but I don't think you're going to see Newmont or Barrick or anything all of a sudden start to um, completely ignore gold while gold goes from whatever it is right now um, to 20,000 or 2020, whatever it is. And, you know, if we go back down to 1950, the, the miners aren't going to ignore that in, in going up. They're, they'll follow gold down, but they, they may def uh, for a day or two at that as we complete that final bottom. Mm -hmm. Gary, one of the other markets I wanted to speak with you about today is oil. You know, we've seen a lot of really big moves in the oil market just from a political standpoint, right? So how are you seeing that chart develop as well? I think oil is going to form a, a really large cup and handle pattern so here was our Russian invasion spike, and then we're, we moved down into the three-year cycle low on the, on the CRB. So I, I think this is the left side of the cup. Uh, we get um, a pretty strong rally here, and then we give it all back. Uh, we chopped around a lot right here before this move took off. We're chopping around a lot right here, I think, before we start to get some momentum on the uh, upper side. So. I think we're, we're about ready to, to form uh, the mirror image uh, of the left side of this cup. We need to form the, the right side, the advancing phase of this cup. And then we'll need to have many months of the handle building out uh, before we get a breakout. But, but I think that's probably what's in play here. We're just building uh, a really big basing pattern. Um, and, and I'm on record. And, you know, every, everybody knows by now I'm on record and $100 silver is going to be a piece of cake. Now, a piece of cake doesn't mean it's going to be an easy move to get there. Mm -hmm. It just means it's going to get there. And I'm on the same thing with, with oil. $200 oil is going to be a piece of cake. Again, doesn't mean it's going to be an easy move to get there, but I think it's going to get there. So right now, I think we're about to get a little momentum in, in the oil market and start to build out the right side of that uh, cup. Uh, this this large basing pattern, mm -hmm. and is that also tied in with the sentiment around oil? You know, kind of turning to that negative side after we've seen that, as you said, that give back of that last rally. Yeah, we're um, in, in oil. I think we're going to build the sentiment by frustration, by just going sideways too long, just not mm -hmm. doing thing. Um, I doubt that oil is going to, you know collapse here and go back down to, to 50 or $40 or anything like that. But, but it is just churning week and week and week here and frustrating people. So we're slowly building the, the sentiment to get some momentum here, but it's doing it um, because it's frustrating everybody more so than it's a, a really scary correction. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Gary. Well, that's, I think all the all the markets that I wanted to go through with you today. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave our listeners with that you have your eye on for this year? Those are pretty much the only markets I tend to trade. I don't really get into markets that I'm not familiar with. So, uh, gold or, or precious metals, um, stocks, stock indexes. I don't trade um, individual stocks. I just stick with ETFs. Mm -hmm. uh, energy, the oil market, and um, I don't really trade the currency markets, but I do keep track of them because uh, they have an effect on um, some of the other markets and especially the gold market. Excellent. And of course, if anybody wants to view more of your material, that's all available at smartmoneytrackerpremium.com. And you're an excellent Twitter follow as well at Gary Savage one, right? That's correct. Perfect. Gary, thanks so much for your time today. All right, thanks for having me on again, Tom. This podcast is for general informational purposes only. Nothing on this podcast should be taken as investment advice. Guests on this show are not compensated for their appearance. Listeners are urged to educate themselves and make their own decisions. Do not base any investment decisions on the information contained. To view our full disclaimer, please visit our website.